Today we're going to talk about some very strange properties of fluids, surface tension and capillarity. Let's start with surface tension. We're going to focus on the interface between a fluid or a liquid and air, let's say water and air. And as you know, in the water, um, in the liquid phase, the molecules are very closely spaced together, whereas in the gaseous phase, they're spread out quite a bit those molecules in the interior of the water they interact with one with one another and they're attracted through molecular forces and if you're in the interior of the fluid those forces are pretty well balanced because you're surrounded by water molecules but if we look at some of the molecules along the edge what you'll find is they've only got water molecules on one side of them on the in the air phase the molecules are so far apart that they don't have much an attractive effect on them so these water molecules along the interface between the water and the air have unbalanced forces on them. And the net effect is we have all of those surface molecules being pulled towards the interior of the fluid. This gives um, a tension to the surface of, of the fluid. And it wraps around the surface of the fluid and kind of pulls it inward. This, this behaves like a skin so you can see this water surface with the um, with the paper clip balanced on it and you can see it deforming and holding up the paper clip as if it has um, substance as if it's um, as if it's like a solid and it, it does behave like a skin because of that surface tension stretching the surface and, and pulling the, the fluid inward uh, water bugs make use of this as we know and this also explains why water droplets form, why water forms little balls at, on the small scale. It's because of that surface pulling the water inward. Okay, to describe this, we use um, the, Greek letters, the Greek letter sigma. And for the air-water interface, it has a value of 0 0.0734 newton per meter. This is a strange unit. It's a force acting along a line. And what that means is anywhere you, you break that surface or on any line across that surface, you have that much force holding that surface together. So let's apply this with an example. <clears throat> we're going to find the pressure inside a water droplet. And we're going to solve this like, um, like you would a, a standard statics problem with a free body diagram that we're going to cut and then um, balance the forces. So we're going to take that sphere we're going to cut it in half and that'll give us half a sphere and then if we look carefully and then if we balance forces in the x direction on that sphere what we'll find is we've got surface tension on the surface of that droplet and we've now cut it in half so right where that skin is cut there's going to be a force acting in the direction of the surface all around that cut and that's the force of surface tension. So it acts all the way around the edge of that sphere in the direction shown. Now balancing that is the pressure. And there's a force of pressure pushing on that cut face from the water on the other side. So we have pressure pushing that way and surface tension pushing the other way. Now to evaluate those, we know pressure is a force per unit area. So it's the value of the pressure times the surface area that it's acting on, which is simply the area of a circle, pi r squared. And then the force of surface tension is sigma times, and that's a force per length, so it's sigma times some length. And the length we use is the circumference of the circle, or the, the tracing of that, that edge that has been cut. And that's 2 pi r and then solving for pressure we get 2 sigma over r. Okay, so these these problems are are tricky to solve. You can't reuse that formula we just derived because the, the that formula is dependent on the geometry shown in this problem. So when when you're given problems like this, you have to go through the same process we went through. You have to derive the formula yourself. You have to start with the object you're looking at cut it in half and then balance forces on the object, preferably in the x direction, then you don't have to worry about gravity. Um, here's an instrument to measure surface tension of a liquid. 
and we have droplets on a surface and then they, it lowers a rod down into it and it, it literally measures the force required to lift that rod out of the fluid and, and break the surface tension along the top of it. So surface tension talks about the liquid air interface. There's also an interaction between liquids and solids. Um, if you look at the figure there, on the left is glass treated so that there's an attraction between the water and the solid. And you can see the water kind of sheets across it and spreads quite nicely. That's called a wetting interface. The other side of the glass has been treated so that there's a repulsive force between the solid and the liquid. And you can see the water balling up and trying to get away from the surface. Um, <clears throat> when this is applied, when this occurs in a tube, you get water either climbing up the surface of the tube, like on the left with water and glass, or water being pushed downward away from the, the glass wall, like with mercury glass where there's a repulsive force. That curvature that you see along the surface of a liquid in a tube, that has a name, we call that the meniscus. You should be familiar with that term. So. Capillarity is the process where liquids can climb up small diameter tubes. If we take water and we stick a tube in it, water will climb up that tube and rise into that, into that tube. And we call the height that it goes up the capillary rise. It's described by this equation, which uh, is in your FE handbook, where H is the capillary rise and it's four times sigma. That's the same sigma we talked about with surface tension. It's four times sigma times the cosine of beta, where beta is the angle that the water makes when it impacts the, um, the glass. That's a measure of that attractive force. And for, um, for glass water, the beta is zero. For mercury water, for example, the beta is 130. And you can look up values for different different types of interactions. And then that's all divided by gamma of the fluid and d, the diameter of the tube. So what you can see is the height that the, the capillary the height of the capillary rise is inversely proportional to the diameter of the tube that you're using. So the, the thinner the tube, the higher the height you can get. So this is this is interesting, although water rising in straws is not necessarily a very useful thing to know. But you don't need straws. You really, this capillary action, this can occur in any um, in anything that's got space, empty space in it. For example, with a towel, if you um, put a towel into water, the, the water can soak the towel just by climbing up the gap between the threads. Um, the same thing happens in soil, and here's a fairly useful application of this in groundwater flow. Um, the, ground, uh, the soil will be saturated with the groundwater up to the water table, but then we also expect the water to rise further above that water level in a zone called the capillary fringe, and this is the region, the region where water rises in, those pore, in that pore space of the soil up above the water table.